Zigbee. It's a thing I didn't really need, but I've been asked to test and review several Zigbee devices now, and that means I've been expanding my Zigbee network. Yesterday, Sonoff released this, the Sonoff Dongle Max. This little gizmo is capable of being a coordinator over USB or a standalone Zigbee router with Wi-Fi, not just for connecting to your existing Wi-Fi, but also for creating a small dedicated IoT access point. You can power the device through the USB and use the Ethernet on any switch or router, or you can use power over Ethernet, which is what I ended up doing because I already have Zigbee coordinators in my two home assistant machines, and I didn't feel like migrating the radios. Once you've connected it to the network via Ethernet, you can go to dongle-m.local to set the password and start configuration. I set up the network with a password so I can start testing the Wi-Fi, and as you can see, it warns you not to go streaming through this thing, and it only supports eight Wi-Fi connected devices. This is somewhat limited, but imagine having a few of these spread out such that they might be assigned to specific rooms or zones. One feature I like is the ability to turn the internet off for the Wi-Fi connected devices, though I'm not sure I necessarily trust shutting the internet off for other devices while leaving it open for this one, but that's just me. If you want to set this device up through ZHA manually, the device actually gives you local instructions for this, which I think is something that should be standard for this sort of thing. Sonoff seems to be relinquishing quite a bit of control as of late, and I hope they continue that trend. Now, before I go into more protocol support, I want to point out that the system on chip that this dongle uses is a Cortex-M33 running at 78 MHz. The previously test-driven PMG24 has the same core, but it runs at 80 MHz, and the reason, I believe, is that the system on chip on the Max also includes an MVP. A matrix vector processor allows the system to do a variety of tricky new things by enabling machine learning on the device itself. Using this extra fanciness, the device can analyze and optimize its radio communication. This is a cool feature to have on this. I have that feature on my Ubiquiti Pro access points, and it's great. Another sort of odd but understandable feature this thing has is built-in WireGuard VPN. I haven't used that yet, and I may never use it, but it's interesting. The last detail that really made me nod and smile is the IP whitelist. Telling the device to only listen to my home assistant machine is really, really neato. On top of having the features I've mentioned, it's also not a terrible looking device at all. It comes with a plastic mounting bracket that you can easily put it in and take it out of, and it also comes with two pads of that goopy double-sided tape that you can peel off the wall and reuse, but I didn't use them. Setting the device up was easy, and adding it to Home Assistant just through the automatic detection was just as easy. I need to do some more testing over time, but since this came out yesterday, I wanted to do a video on it. From what I've seen so far, it does what it says it does, and it's a pretty well thought out package. The Sonoff Dongle Max will run you about $43, which I can't tell if that's a high price or not because I don't have any single device against which to compare. It's the first combination of these things in a device that I've used. Sonoff also released another device yesterday, the TX Gen 2 Smart Touch Switch. The TX comes in one, two, and three channel versions. This one is obviously the two channel. While it's not as colorful as the TX Ultimate, I like the simple glass face with these small details showing you where to toggle the relays. Wiring is pretty straightforward. You'll need a neutral as well as a hot, and you get a hot back for each channel to wire your loads to. I used a lamp cord and one of my standalone switch boxes to test this, but I didn't hook anything directly up to the outputs. Instead, after adding the device to my Home Assistant by scanning the Matter QR sticker, I told Home Assistant to toggle each of the two lamps based on which switch channel was changed. I did this in four very simple automations, triggered by the on or off events of either channel. The only complaint I have about this device 
is that it isn't the same shape and size on the back as the NS panels or the TX Ultimate, but that's really only because I made the standalone switch box to fit those fairly specifically. Again, since this only released yesterday, I can't tell you how reliable or potentially quirky the device may be over time and in different situations, but I will do an update video after a few months to let you know how things go. One thing I can tell you now is that the single channel version of the TX Gen 2 is $20, the two channel is $22, and the three channel is $24 which all seem pretty reasonable given the aesthetic and immediately observable build quality. Anyway, that's all I've got, but before I close, I want to mention that I will be doing some build videos soon. I'm planning to revisit the curtain draw system, and I have another weird Raspberry Pi Pico device to make, but I don't know what order any of this is going to happen in. You'll know when I know. I'd like to take a moment to thank all viewers, listeners, and attentive telepaths for your minutes. We're all allotted an unknown limited supply of minutes, and you've spent some of yours with me. I really do sincerely appreciate that. Time is the greatest gift anyone can give. I hope you enjoyed the video or found it informative, and I also hope you'll join me next time as I continue exploring Smarter Circuits.